Hi, this is Megan Jacks, Creative Memories Independent Advisor, and I'm here with sketch number one from the March 2022 Creative Memories Virtual Crop. If you'd like to get a copy of this sketch, you can see the links in the description for this video, and that'll help you get hooked up with the, um, the sketch itself. But this is a single page sketch. We can see three vertical images here. There is a um, kind of a decorative matte detail here on the center image. And then we can see the ribbon detail here at the top with some embellishments. So the March 2022 virtual crop had a secret box that was um, opened um, just before the crop started. And there were some elements in there that if you're working with those contents, that this sketch is going to work perfect for you. There were some um, laser cut mats. There was a fun punch that allows us to do these ribbon cuts super easy. This is a three in one ribbon tag punch. So I am not using that, um, that kit, the papers and the, um, the mats from the secret box. I did use the punch as part of this, but I'm going to be using the Sparks of Magic collection. And the reason is, is because I've had these three vertical images of my little guy just being silly. Um, and I've been waiting to use them, um, in a layout and this layout just works perfect. The three hor um, vertical images, just absolutely perfect. We have one center image is kind of crazy. And then the two outside images here. So that's, what we're going to work with. And I thought the sparks of magic with the blues and the blacks and the reds would work perfect. So we'll go ahead and get started. I do have a tonal piece of paper here. Uh, this is actually from the, um, Magic Awaits collection. There were some nice tonal reds, blacks, and yellows in there. Grab my cutting mat and go ahead and get my paper, this single page on the background here. Now, when you're looking at the sketch, if you go ahead and you uh, grab the one that has the measurements or even just working from the original, you'll note here that they have this, um, just a background uh, paper, and then they have this, um, what looks like a larger piece of paper that is kind of a background mat. Well, um, I ran into the problem that I wanted to use this lovely uh, plaid paper, has all the colors I wanted in it, but I didn't have a big enough piece to be able to do the eight wide by 10 and three quarters long. Now, the thing you do note here is that this center section, we can't see any of that background paper or this background mat. So what I've done is I cut it into two sections. I was able to get, um, I think I used about eight wide by, well, this piece is my bottom piece. So around the bottom, I have about a two inch tall piece. And then I think at the top, it was just uh, right around three inches. So I had about a total of an eight by five that I worked with. I cut it in two sections and that's how I got those top and bottom pieces. You could of course use different colors. They don't have to match. Um, I give you the measurements for the entire piece because sometimes it's just easier to work with those full size pieces rather than I'm gonna have to piece this the whole thing together a little bit. So. Um, as we uh, keep progressing here, I've got those pieces that I put into place. Now, I have already done a big dry fit on this. Um, and one of the things that I noted when I did this is I wanted a little bit more separation. I kind of felt with the plaid, the lines, the way they were, they needed um, a place to stop that wasn't the black background. So with that in mind, I went ahead and I cut some aqua pieces or this is from the aqua paper. I cut them just a little bit wider. So they are, um, I think I went eight and a quarter wide and that is going to fit about like such. And then this will go in like that. So that's, um, how I handled that because I really needed it. I needed just something there. And that is totally going to be up to you and how your papers work. It just worked best for me to have just a little bit of separation, just a little bit of an extra border. And since I was able to use scraps to get it to work, I didn't mind putting that extra layer of paper in there. So I'm just going there. I'm going to have about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around or border all the way around. So you can see there's those borders. So I've got that top and bottom piece going here. Now, when it comes to actually putting these in place, um, you're going to want to use a ruler. If you have a T square, that works perfect. 
So I've got my T-square here. I know I'm eight inches. This um, top piece here is eight inches wide. So that centers at two inches. So I can come down here and kind of put it into place about two inches from the left side. And when I put that in place, and I'm just going to do a light tacking of it in place right now. And I'll go ahead and uh, put it in. And I'm about one inch from the bottom. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm lining up the edge of my the plaid piece at that two inches. And I'm going to go a little bit less than, um, well, we'll bring it down to one inch for right now. And I'll tack it into place. So that T-square just makes means I can line up these edges. Since it's not all one piece, that can be a little bit of the tricky part, is making sure that these edges are nice and straight, and it will give the illusion that it is all one piece. So next up the, in this sketch, and I am following this sketch pretty closely. It just works so well for my photos. Um, I want to talk about the center mat. So I was lucky that the, um, or what worked well for me was that these, um, Sparks of Magic had uh, the laser cut mats in it. So I did have some decorative mats to work with. I really liked this blue with the stars. It fit really well in with this, um, the, the everything here. One thing though, is it didn't, it, it was uh, see-through. It was, it had these holes in it. And I wanted to have those stars stand out a little bit. And also I was going to have some black here showing or at least my um, other photos would be peeking through under here. So I went ahead and backed it with some tonal red paper from the Sparks of Magic collection. So that'll go here in the center. And I did have to trim down my photo a little bit. This is, um, when I put a full four by six on there, I couldn't see many of the stars. So I trimmed my photo a little bit. And I mentioned that in these, um, kind of a little tip here. You may need to do some adjustments here. They do show a photo with a mat and then the decorative mat. I am leaving out this um, thin mat here in the middle and I did have to shrink my photo down. It's um, probably closer to three and a half by five and a half, somewhere in there. And then my two outside photos will come in and they needed a little bit of something here. So I went ahead and uh, trimmed some of this beige tonal paper from the Sparks of Magic because the other side is the, um, the cameras. So I went ahead and trimmed that down. These aren't quite four by six. The reason they're not four by six is I didn't have a lot of this beige. I had a 12 inch length that was, it was close to five inches wide. So I went ahead and I trimmed it to four and a quarter inches wide, but I was not going to be able to get, you know, I, I could only make it a six inch tall. So that was, that was easy enough. I just cut it at six inches. I got two mats out of it. I trimmed my photo down by a quarter of an inch and it worked perfect. So that's when we talk about using, um, you know, mats that are six and a quarter, um, tall is that's an easy adjustment to make if you want to just have it so you get two mats out of that 12 inch length just change that to six inches and adjust your photo accordingly i did leave them at four inches wide there um the upper section or the left hand section of the right photo will be covered up it gets tucked under and we're going to see that this left side here and i think i actually need to make a quick adjustment I need to make an adjustment to my photo. I need to have it come off a little bit more to the um, to the side because of how he's standing. Um, otherwise, his little fist gets tucked in behind there. So it's going to be a little offset, but because of that getting tucked under, you won't even notice. It's going to look kind of something like this. All right, so that's kind of what we're going with the, the photos themselves. So let me just go ahead, and I think I'm going to cut off just a little bit more, a little bit more on this side. Just make sure we have plenty of room. And I'll go ahead and adhere this photo onto the mat. I'm going to go ahead and stick this photo onto the decorative mat. So 
some of those stars peeking out. And I know I need to come down just a little bit. I need to give as much room up here at the top and that's gonna become apparent here in a second. I gotta get that ribbon cut. So I made the ribbon out of the tonal paper and I used that punch right here at the end. This is a two inch width. It was super easy just to slide right in the punch and go ahead and um, snip that. Of course, if you're using a different width, you can still use that ribbon um, punch for it. Um, I hope you had a chance to see the um, technique tour video that I did with the new ribbon punch, but you can use any width up to two and a half inches. You can go ahead and use that uh, punch for. So this gets put in place here. And these elements will get tucked under, or they lay at the ribbon gets tucked under that top. And then the, we do, I am gonna make sure that this uh, top border, uh, the top edge of the mat covers up. At least I think I do. Sometimes I get a little bit wishy-washy in what I'm thinking. So we'll, we'll kind of dry fit it all that way. Everything's looking pretty good. I can still see that pattern. And now it kind of comes into, I've got the bulk of the layout done. Now I've made a little bit of a change. I have my two side pictures here angled ever so slightly. I think in the sketch, they had them straight. So I could put them as straight. It has a very linear, this um, layout is very, you know, very linear with straight lines. I do have that little bit of a wavy detail here. Um, from the Sparks of Magic collection, I have a cute little uh, journal box that I'm going to use here at the bottom. I'm not going to be able to journal on the paper here that they kind of indicate as a place where you'd be able to journal uh, just because of the pattern of the paper. I have two stickers that I'm going to be using. One that says so silly because uh, he was being pretty silly. And all that will get kind of put in place. And then love this moment. And I don't need a lot of room to journal just that sweet little moment. And then it was all about putting the title at the top. Now in the sketch, they do show using some embellishments up here. I'm not going to um, add additional embellishments to it because I wasn't really finding a shape that was gonna work well for me. I liked this little pop of yellow here at the bottom. So what I decided to do is do my title in Buttercup. And it's just a title that I've used my um, die cut letters and it says Kapow because I thought that was kind of funny. Kapow, he thought he was gonna be showing off how strong he is with that fist. And so it's just gonna come in here at the top with the letters. I definitely love all of the die cut letters. I have a little bit of an assortment of them. It's about the only um, part I use the die cuts for. I don't really do much with the die cut shapes or embossing any kind of textures or anything like that. I just pretty much use it for the, for the letters. So there, that is pretty much gonna be how it looks. So that would be sketch number one from the Creative Memories 20, March 2022 virtual crop. And I think it looks all set. I'm gonna finish tacking or putting it all down. You'll see the final, uh, image of it here in just a second. But thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I am looking forward to sharing sketch number two with you here in a little while. Thanks.